Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you are watching this video because of the title, I am pregnant. I wanted to give y'all a really quick little life update because obviously it's been some time since we've seen each other face to face here on YouTube. There have been a lot of moving parts in my life and so I wanted to just kind of give you a really quick rundown of where we are today and what you can expect to see from me in the next couple of months. If this is your first time visiting me today, welcome. Like I said, my name is Rocio, Rocio Isabel, and I create content around lifestyle, curls, and mommyhood. So if that's something that you're interested in, then join the family, hit that subscribe button, and then tap on the bell because the bell is what's gonna notify you every time I upload a new video here on YouTube. So, like I was saying, there's a bun in the oven. This is my second pregnancy and I'm really excited. I'm really thrilled to finally share the news with you guys. I have waited for the end of my second trimester. So I am in week 13 as of now. And I've waited so long because I always hear like that stigma of, oh, you should wait until the end of your first trimester. And it was, it's been killing me y'all. It's been killing me to not share. And deep down, I wanted to share the news with you guys the moment that I found out because it's been so lonely. It's been very difficult to hide my emotions. I'm not a very good liar whatsoever. I feel like I just sort of shut down and I hide so that nobody sees me because I feel like if anybody sees me, they're gonna know. But also another big reason why I haven't shared yet is because I'm still sort of processing the trauma of the first delivery, which I'll go to in a second, but I'm still excited nonetheless. Like I said, I'm 13 weeks pregnant. My due date is December 29th. We know the gender, but we don't know the gender at the same time. I did the early NIPT blood draw, which basically tests for any genetic abnormalities early in your pregnancy, but it can also let you know what the gender is of your baby before a traditional ultrasound. So I have the gender in an envelope, it's somewhere in this house. I can't let you know where it is because if my husband watches this, he's gonna go look for the envelope because he just cannot wait. If it was up to me, I would wait till the delivery to know what the gender is, but I just know he cannot wait whatsoever. So we're gonna have a gender reveal, hopefully in the coming weeks. And of course, I'll let y'all know what the gender is once we find out. My first baby is about to be two in a matter of days now. So I essentially have had two years, you would hope, to fully process what happened in that first delivery. Mind you, the second half of my pregnancy, and of course the delivery happened during the height of the pandemic. Like the world shut down just a couple of months before I gave birth to my first baby. So there was already a heightened level of anxiety added to the pregnancy and of course the delivery. I haven't shared here on YouTube or on Instagram my full birth story. I tried to record it with Lance and even during our recording session, it was just kind of like, I was reliving a lot of things and I just, I had to stop <laughs> in the middle of us recording because I, I just, I didn't wanna keep going. However, my birth story is out there. If you're interested, if you wanna hear it, we did a podcast with The Water Break. Um, it's The Water Break podcast, I believe on Spotify, Apple. I'll leave a link down in the description box below, but we gave our entire birth story and it wasn't that bad talking to another couple about it, but I almost feel like me just sitting here and giving a testimonial of what went down is almost a little harder because it's it, that, I don't know, it's like another layer of vulnerability. I don't know y'all, like I said, I'm still going to therapy because of it, okay? And I don't say that to scare anybody or anything like that, but just to give you a little bit of an idea of what went down, like I said, the second half of my pregnancy, the world shut down. I couldn't make any of my appointments with my husband. I had to go to all of them by myself, which, isn't necessarily that bad, but with it being my first pregnancy, I wanted him to be there. I couldn't have anybody else in the delivery room or in the hospital with me other than my husband, which in hindsight wasn't actually that bad because there were some women who couldn't have anybody, not even their husband. So for that, I'm grateful. I didn't have the <laughs> delivery that I was hoping for. I really wanted to have a vaginal delivery. I pushed for two hours and then we wound up having to have an emergency C-section because her heart rate was going down. They said that she wouldn't fit. So all these things happened. It was just like a rush of emotions. On the operating room table, it was taking a long time to get her out, her longer than expected because she was wedged in there. And I thought I was dying. I legit thought that that was the end of my life. I don't wanna start crying because like I said, I'm still processing it, but I thought that was it for me. Um, 
I actually told Lance on the operating room table once she was already out um, if this could be our only baby like if this can can this be it basically because I didn't want to have to go through that again I also had a horrible experience with the lactation department at the hospital that I delivered at so it was just like a culmination of everything that could go wrong did go wrong sort of thing so I decided that that was it for me it was just gonna be one baby and I was cool with it fast forward to like a year later Penelope is one and I'm starting to feel like I'm getting my life back together I'm starting to feel more myself again and it's almost like my body tricked me into being like you know what you could do this again you made for this you you got this and little by little the baby fever started coming back and in talking to Lance about it we thought you know what we think Penelope could probably use a sibling so we decided we would try again but not in that moment i knew that my brother's wedding was coming up in a couple of months and i wanted to turn up i wanted to drink and i wanted to not be pregnant for the wedding once the wedding passed because everybody knew that i was holding off because of this wedding i had family members that were asking okay so when are you gonna start kind of thing and in the back of my mind i knew like i want to start now like i want to start immediately but i didn't want to pressure lance because i knew that he knew that we knew that we wanted to expand our family but i didn't want to pressure him or rush him i was just gonna like let it happen when it happened and then new year's eve after we put penelope to bed we were talking and then he just sort of like sprung it up on me he's like i think we should start trying for another baby and i was just like bursting out in tears because it's what I had been wanting to do you know basically right after the wedding I was just thrilled that it was his idea to just start then you know I don't know so we've actually been trying since January 1st well New Year's Eve if I'm being technical so because of the fact that with Penelope with my first baby it happened pretty quickly pretty just like <laughs> unintentionally we thought that this was gonna happen the same way we started at the beginning of the year and because my period is pretty on track I actually bought a pregnancy test early like three days before my period was supposed to come and it almost felt like as I was peeing on the stick my cramps decided to come and sure enough it was negative so we were a little bummed out a little disappointed but we're like it's okay it's just the first month we'll try again we tried again the second month still negative I decided to delete the apps I decided to not track anything because it was starting to stress me out. And then on top of that, Lance was starting to stress me out because every time I got a negative test, he'd be like, what's happening? Like, what if we're not fertile anymore? What if it was COVID? What if it was the vaccine? What if we're just getting older? What if like all these what ifs? And I'm just like, I don't need this kind of stress in my life. Like it's just not gonna make things any better. So I deleted all the apps, try to put it out of my mind. We tried again for the third month in March and it was still negative. I spoke to an old high school friend who happens to be a nurse at Penelope's pediatrician's office, like an hour and a half away from where we grew up. And she asked if I wanted any advice because she understands that as moms, we don't really like unsolicited advice, but I was actually willing to take the advice at this point. And she said that the ovulation trackers can sort of like pinpoint exactly when you are or will be the most fertile. So I was like, well, I haven't tried it yet. That's like the only thing I haven't tried yet. So we'll give it a shot. I had heard from other people that usually in your second pregnancy, things take a little longer and all this stuff. So I was just trying to like not stress about it, have fun trying. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I actually had a conversation with Lance like two days before I bought the ovulation tracker. Like, hey, are we cool with Penelope just being the only child because if this doesn't work, you know, if this isn't in the cards for us, we need to be on the same page about being cool with this. He was like, yeah, you know what? If it's just Penelope, cool. If we keep intentionally trying and it works, then it works, you know, but we weren't going to stress about it anymore. We we're just gonna have fun, right? So I, I bought the ovulation tracker anyway. I was peeing on the stick every morning and it would show me my H, what is it, HG, HC results? I forget what it is. And sure enough, on one bright Sunday morning, it was like a very bright, clear line. So I was like, it's on. Fast forward to two weeks later, I woke up one morning, I had to pee, and there just happened to be a extra pregnancy test there because like I said, we had been trying. I bought a couple pregnancy tests. I was taking them almost religiously. Anyway. I took the test and it was very, very pregnant. As soon as I saw the word pregnant, I was like, I 
I had no words. <laughs> I was in shock. I was very, very excited, but I was just in shock because I think it hit me like, oh, this is happening again kind of thing. Penelope had just woken up. I went to go get her out of her crib. And then I just started hyperventilating, crying. And I had to turn around because I didn't want her to see me, but I was just like, holy shit, this is really happening. Oh my God, I have a, what's gonna be a two-year-old and I'm gonna be pregnant again. I am pregnant again. Like I had just like a rush of emotions. I had to calm myself down because my baby started crying because she wanted out of the crib. And I had to just like snap myself back into reality. I had started looking up on Pinterest almost immediately of different ways to surprise Lance because the first go round, it wasn't like this big reveal or this big surprise. And if you want to know how I told him, we did a whole video with the first pregnancy. So if, I'll leave a link for that one too in the description box below. But this go around, I wanted to do something special and different. And I was just like, I think overwhelmed with all these different surprises and reveals. But Lance came home the next day. Like I said, I can't keep secret. I can't lie. It shows on my face. He came over to the couch and he started blowing raspberries on Penelope's belly because she had just learned to blow raspberries like in that week. So it was just really cute to see him do that. And I was like, well, you want to kiss my belly and he's like why and I was like because there's a baby in there and he's like and he just started crying and I was like I wanted to share the news with you in a cool way but I just can't hold it I can't lie like this is just but it was still an exciting and happy moment I just wish I would have done something more extravagant you know not even 15 minutes later he was like I gotta go tell my mom and he grabbed the pregnancy test went to go tell his mom and I was like, now I have to tell my parents. And I think it was the next day or two days later, we went to New Orleans. And again, I, I wanted to do something really cool, really special like I did with Penelope, but I just, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was just like, I just didn't have the energy or whatnot. We wrote, I'm gonna be a big sister on a piece of paper. We grabbed one of the frames that she already had in the house. We put the writing in the frame and then we just had Penelope give it to my parents and that was it. Yeah. Little by little, we just started sharing the news with our family members and our close friends now on Instagram and YouTube. So the cat's out the bag. As far as symptoms go very early on, some things started to make sense to me. So as y'all may or may not know, I actually picked up baking and decorating cookies as a hobby and side hustle. I was working on a rush of orders one week and once I was done, I was so, so tired that I found myself going to sleep as soon as we put Penelope down for bed at like 7.30 eight o'clock and then just like knocking out the whole night. I thought it was because of the cookies. It very well could have been because of the cookies, but that had like that had continued for the rest of the week. And within days, my sense of smell heightened to the max. I could smell everything. Lit like, oh my God, you guys, I could smell everything. What was worst of all was Penelope's feet. Lance would try to buy these air fresheners to help better the smell of all of the smells I was smelling and it just made it worse. So with that came the nausea and the nausea was just so extreme. And in addition to the nausea, what's actually different this pregnancy is the vomiting. I've actually been vomiting quite a lot in this first trimester, but I wanna save a lot of those like symptoms and sort of like first trimester recap for another video. I have a line of videos coming for you guys. I'm really, really excited to just finally share the news with you. And then just to let you know, you're actually gonna be seeing more videos from me, particularly about the pregnancy, but I'm also not gonna exclude hair and like mommyhood and lifestyle kind of thing. So you'll be seeing more of me in the coming months and I'm just thrilled to finally share the news with you guys. That's why I've been hiding. That's why I've been MIA for the most part. That's why I stopped taking cookie orders if you're following me because of that. That's why a lot of things, okay? So I'm excited. I'm excited. I am anxious. I'm nervous, but I'm extremely, extremely happy. I am mentally preparing myself for the rest of this pregnancy journey and for the delivery. Like, oh, actually, I don't think I even told you guys. My hope this go round 
is to have a VBAC. I would still love to try to give birth vaginally. Um, I have decided to switch hospitals. I want a fresh start, a fresh experience. I have, for some reason, this trauma and this memory, bad memory attached to the first hospital that I gave birth at. It's nothing so much of like, it's the hospital's fault at all. I, I don't think that at all. I just think that there was a lot of bad emotions and experiences attached to that delivery experience. And walking into that hospital, even just like for my regular yearly checkups with my or my gyno, it's just like those memories come back. So I wanted a fresh start. The hospital I will be having the second baby at, they go the midwife route. I just feel so far with the visits that I've had, I feel more confident in myself and in my body and in my mind and in the medical providers. And I feel more comfortable there as well. So there are a lot of emotions attached to this pregnancy, but overall they're positive and they're happy emotions. So with that being said, I hope that you guys will stick with me on this journey. Like I said, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, you can follow me on Instagram at La Rocio Isabel. And that's basically it. I love y'all. Un besito. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.